Hello friends, my name is Marines and this is the start of a reading blog. I am trying to read 30 books in the month of December. I am up to four books, so a little bit behind pace here, but still feeling pretty good. It is Wednesday, December 8th, so this is week two in this project. I mentioned these two books, Half Sick of Shadows and We Are Okay, I actually started We Are Okay as books that I was going to be reading last week. And you know, if I were not such a mood reader and somebody who was good at TBRs, I would just carry these two over to this week but I'm not gonna. I'm not really feeling either of these right now, not to say that I won't get to them at all in December, but I'm gonna put them back on my TBR cart and pick some new ones for, for the week. Don't worry, it will be fine. <laughs> Here's what I'm thinking. So first I have Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. I actually started this when I first bought it and maybe tried it again sometime after that, but I've marked up to page 31. I feel like I remember pretty clearly what I read. I might skim through those first 30 pages to really clear it up, but I want to finish this and it is a relatively short read, so I think that I can do that in quick work, which is great, so that I can catch up to my pace here. Then I have Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McGonaghy and this was a book of the month pick in August. They sent this to me as part of the the box for August and I was like immediately very interested in this but then I saw my friend Sarah who also does book of the month and she read this one and was like 4.5 stars and really loved the writing and Sarah and I have super similar tastes. Actually when we were very young in our early 20s we would spend a lot of our like sitting at a desk like being administrative assistants work days actually reading on our Kindles like the same book and comparing notes. So <laughs> Sarah and I have really similar tastes and she loved this one so it bumped it up my TBR for sure and I just think that the premise is really intriguing and that the vibes feel right for December. And then for a larger book that I am not going to finish this week, maybe probably, but I want to get started on, Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. So I, when I bought this, I made a whole video <laughs> about um, why I read things that I, I feel like maybe I won't like. And I explained that I bought this for a book club, but the book club changed their mind. And then I just had this copy and I was like, I'm still gonna read it. And I read maybe a couple of chapters and I was like, eh, I don't wanna read this. Um, I still am like, I own this, I'm going to read it, primarily for content, Let, don't get me wrong. When I started it, and I mentioned back in the video, those first few chapters were like better than I than some of the stuff in Akatar so I was like okay maybe this won't be like the worst Sarah J Mass I ever read but in general her, her writing style is not for me so I'm also like not incredibly optimistic but I want to see how far I can get in this see if I can finish it off and like move it off of my shelves um was I marking this up I don't think I was marking this up I was. <laughs> I was marking this up. Um, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I'm going to keep marking it up. That just is going to slow me down. Not for this December project. Uh, so I think I'm just going to try and read it without paying attention to like markups or anything like that. So that's that. In terms of the other things that I have going on, so if you watched my first video, I mentioned trying to get books off of my like TBR cart out. And then I'm also reading all of the books that were nominated for the romance category and the Goodreads Choice Awards. And so I have The Spanish Love Deception and The Soulmate Equation left. I think the winner is announced today or sometime this week. So I'd like to get those done and then have a different video about all of those. Um, <laughs> big plans. And then the other thing I'm doing is uh, like putting in a nonfiction book in here. So the nonfiction book that I'm reading right now, and again, I got this from the library, is How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. So those are the plans. You guys know I suck at plans. And every time I update, I feel like I am like, okay, one more thing that I'm trying to do. Um, <laughs> I will try not to add any other sources of <laughs> books into this. Um, but you know, we're, we're winging it. It here. Uh, other plans? Do I have anything going on? I don't think so besides work. I am like about to jump into work. I haven't started work yet because I got a late start. I was feeling a little fatiguey from my booster shot which I got yesterday but otherwise no other symptoms and now that I like slept in a little I've got my coffee going. I'm feeling much much better so I'm gonna jump into work and like I said I don't think I have anything else going on this week so maybe it'll be a good reading week. 
wish me luck. It is not quite the end of my work day, uh, but I have so much work left to do. It's a payroll week and I'm processing payroll today and I had a lot of changes to make, but I just got hit with like the most intense hunger. And <laughs> despite being uh, like for quite a while now, like Uber Eats and Postmates number one customer, I have just been really in the mood to cook for myself recently, which again is not something I have been doing at all for quite a while. So I'm going with it, trying to get myself back in the habit of actually making meals at home. So I'm taking a little break right now to make myself, it's like an early dinner at this point, but I didn't really have lunch. So we're going with it and um, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And then I have to go back to work and finish processing this payroll at least on top of like the 150 emails that are waiting for me. But um, I'm going to be listening to the soulmate equation as I'm cooking and eating, which I started that last night and I got 41% of the way through. So it's really very quickly. I'm not very familiar with Christina Lauren. I've read one other book by them and it's uh, J uh, Josh and Hazel, I think is the name, Josh and Hazel's Guide to something. <laughs> I'm really great at remembering titles off the top of my head. Um, so I read that one and I, I enjoyed it. There were some parts of it that were a little like, I don't know, cringe or icky, but overall it was like, a good reading experience. I enjoyed my time. Uh, and this one's going well so far too. Actually, I'm really surprised I made it 41% of the way through because I guess, I don't know if it's like super short or what. This is making me realize that like the pacing might be weird because that's like a significant chunk of the book and we're really just getting to the point where she's like, I have to date him. <laughs> so uh, interesting. Uh, but I am enjoying it. I really like the premise of like this dating service that uses DNA and sort of like who the main characters are to each other, right? Like the reluctant user and the guy who started it all. And I do like the way that the main character is sort of like standing up for herself and not liking this guy because of how he treated her in the opening scenes and who he is to her. So we're just getting to the point where maybe they'll start to get to know each other and like realize different sides. So I don't really have much commentary on the romance, but I like sped through the setup, so that's great. And I hope to finish this today. My like my real hope is to finish this and I wanted to finish a Spanish love deception today too so I could look up who won the Goodreads thing. Um, that I'm so freaking busy, have I mentioned that? But I, I just don't know that with like everything I still have to do with work that I'll be able to finish all of my work and then get these two books done. We'll see. And then I'll be done with this like group of romances and I can move on to some other types of books. This is the worst clip in the history of the world. So <laughs> if you're seeing it, that's how committed I am to making this vlog. Um, but obviously, like I'm in bed, no makeup, fan is running, I'm sorry, um, and it's late, but I just, I needed, I am, I am so upset at the Spanish love deception. I finished the soulmate equation, I'll give a real update on that tomorrow. So I'm trying to finish the Spanish love deception, and I'm 200 pages in. And we still haven't even gotten to Spain. This is a contemporary romance in which the entire plot is just taking a fake date to a wedding. And at 200 pages, not even halfway through the book, we still even haven't gotten out of the country. At 200 pages, this thing should be, it's like, we're at the climax, baby. You're, I, I don't understand why this is so long. And how, why, do, I don't understand the appeal here because everything is so drawn out. It is so repetitive. The two main characters are absolutely dense and oblivious. And I'm just, I, I'm baffled. I'm so baffled. I'm giving you this clip in bed with no makeup. I turned the light back on because I was literally reading in the dark. And, but I just had to let you know. This is not like the worst written thing I've ever read. It's pretty bad. But I'm hating it. The reading experience is so awful. <laughs> it's so boring. Oh my god.
Am I gonna make it? Okay, let's back it up and let's start here. I did finish the Spanish Love Deception. I read it all and I will say that the second half of the book is better than the first half of the book but I'm not sure that that is saying overly much or at least that I was so fed up with the first 250 pages of this that whatever it kind of gained back in momentum or chemistry for the characters like it was a little bit too little too late for me. I kept thinking about this in comparison to The Love Hypothesis which I personally enjoyed and it had a very similar pacing vibe in which there is like this slow burnish like lead up in a fake dating situation which culminates in like one extended spicy scene basically. But The Spanish Love Deception has about a hundred pages on the love hypothesis to start with uh, which it absolutely did not need. It did not need those hundred pages. In fact like 150 probably could have been cut out of this book and it would have been a much better book for it. It felt so miserable in that experience especially because you're sitting with the main character who is clearly to the audience being very obtuse about like her feelings for this man and just like sort of really seeing what is going Going on and he to be fair is like kind of a jerk to her like not in a like very violent way but they they bicker and snap at each other because they've got like this professional rivals thing going on and it just goes on and on and on and on and I don't understand what enjoyment we were supposed to be getting from those first 200 to 250 pages it just made him seem wooden with no personality and no redeeming qualities and her seem dense so dense. And by the time we get to the oh I never saw what was in front of me and him being like I was only like antagonizing you because it was the only way I could be around you like I was like don't care. <laughs> I had to deal with so much of it. It needed help tightening the plot which would have fixed the pacing and there were a lot of like really awkwardly worded things and so much repetition which you guys know I'm sensitive to repetition and it wasn't even just like kind of how long Long we lingered in in each of the sections of this book both the lead up and then like the actual wedding and fake dating but just in the way she constructed sentences and used language and like in the way that we spent time in the main character's head it was just the same things over and over and over again and I found this like none pleasant I would give it 1.5 out of 5 stars, 1 to 1.5 out of 5 stars. I always give a little bit of a range because when I'm doing these like reactions and reviews they're off the cuff. <laughs> like I just sit down and I'm like bleh feelings. So the rating hasn't quite settled for me yet but I have an idea of kind of like the range that I'm in and this is definitely between 1 and 1.5 and stars which 1 is the lowest rating that I, I give a book. <laughs> and this like I looking back I'm like was it that bad but like probably when I'm editing this and I get to the clip of me being so frustrated about like being in the middle of the story I'll be like yeah that that was a one star experience so I I oh I I think it's extra frustrating because there was like potential here. You could tell the portion of this that probably was the author's favorite to write or like what came first and it was very much when they first get together sort of that extended sequence that you could tell was like written better, edited better and is where the author did the best but then everything else surrounding that to the tune of almost 500 pages just needed a ton more work that it didn't get so uh least favorite on this list you I'm going to make a video ranking them all <laughs> but I feel like that's that's a good probably probably yeah maybe and then going back before that I did also finish the soulmate equation and I enjoyed that one I mentioned before that I had only read one Christina Lauren but I forgot that we read her holiday book from last year uh, for how salt and that was like middling to me it was fine like a three star read maybe 2.5 star I can't remember quite um, it was fine and this one I enjoyed more than that one the premise was very cute and this is another one where the main character the main male character is kind of a grump and at first when you see him he's being a jerk to the main character or at least standoffish and he says something like without knowing that she's listening about her being kind of average and it's it hurts her but 
almost immediately we start to see him change his behavior towards her when she calls him out and we do see that even though he's kind of standoffish there are things that are endearing about him different to Aaron in the Spanish love deception I think that this sort of like prickly character was done better and I enjoyed their chemistry I enjoyed that she had a child and she had like these complicated like family situations as well and just the idea of like this dating scenario and like being thrown together and if knowing that you're meant to be with somebody like influences how you approach the relationship all of that was really sweet and and well done I forget that Christina Lauren like in their more recent contemporaries are fade to blacks and I was listening to this so it made me a little bit confused when it would be like and he kissed me and all of a sudden it would be like it was great and I was like did I sk <laughs> I was like, oh, fade to black, but I can't tell because I'm not looking at the page. Uh, so that was like a, a fun, quirky experience. I would put the X-Hex and the Soulmate Equation kind of neck and neck in terms of like just solid, good, enjoyable romance. So that is uh, books five and six. And we are on the 11th, so still trailing quite a bit here. Uh, I did start listening to another audiobook after I finished all of those, and it is uh, Consumed by Aja Barber. The subtitle is The Need for Collective Change, Colonialism, Climate Change, and Consumerism. I picked this one up because it is the pick for the book club that Nicole and Deboki run, the nonfiction book club, and the live show is today. I'm actually headed out the door right now. I'm going out with my sisters, so I will continue listening to consumed in between things today and hopefully be able to catch the live show but I think between everything and then my reading before bed tonight I will finish this so that will be book seven I also started reading once there were wolves but it's been like two chapters so I have no thoughts there uh, but those I think will be the next two that I kind of go through uh, and I gotta go before I'm late <laughs> I feel like this lighting is making me look as tired as I feel, <laughs> but uh, it's Monday night. I've had a long day at work and I spent a lot of this weekend just catching up on emails and doing a bunch of stuff that I wanted to get ahead of, particularly because I forgot to mention this, but I'm super behind on this whole like 30 books thing, but I'm not freaking out yet because I have from the 22nd to the 3rd off and I feel like I will be able to gain some ground when I'm not working but in order to take those days off there's just a bunch of stuff that I have to like wrap up because do we actually get time off uh no you just like do all of the work before or after so I'm trying to get all of this work done so I can have some days off and then read some more but I'm not reading enough right now because I'm doing all of this work to have the time off to read some more in addition to all of that, I also finished reading Consumed by Aja Barber. This was really, really thought provoking and accessible. There were a lot of like ideas and arguments here that weren't entirely new to me, but they were brought together in a really seamless and accessible way. I listened to this on audiobook, which was wonderful because her tone is very, very conversational. The way that she presents everything is just really like she's talking to you about like, hey, here's a bunch of really terrible stuff that we're doing. And then she also presents like, here's what we can do about like our overconsumption. I absolutely love the way that she consistently tied our our consumerism problem particularly when it comes to fast fashion to colonialism and so the, these are not like I said new arguments to me and but I think that this was really like I really really needed to hear it because specifically because of TikTok and just like starting on a new app and the way that TikTok is like TikTok is more likely to sell me on things than any other app I resent Instagram ads I resent them so much and I like I actively avoid buying anything I've ever seen on Instagram like on principle. Twitter doesn't really sell me anything and I'm not on Facebook but when I got into TikTok my spending did absolutely increase and not because of ads because again don't pay attention to those but word of mouth from other creators on TikTok and particularly I fell into the trap of like going into Shein and some of these other like fast fashion things that are really popular on TikTok and making purchases and I had actually even seen people defending fast fashion in a way that I thought 
like made sense or maybe I just like wanted it to make sense but listening to this like reaffirmed everything that I already knew about like how harmful this is to the planet but I think it did it in a way that like the arguments for like I do this because I can or like I don't spend money on more sustainable things because I can't afford it like she really grounds those things and what they actually mean and ties that back to what the actual cost is that we are paying for fast fashion and for over consumerism and this idea of asking myself what are the things that I really need and where am I buying because I feel like I have to buy or pressured to buy or I'm buying out of like some misplaced like uh, idea that this is like self-care when it isn't especially when I'm causing more harm than good so asking those like baseline questions of like why am I buying this why do I feel like I need this Am I over consuming? Do I really need this? I think that was such a good reminder. I just think it had a really clear argument. You really understood Aja's like background and where she was coming to this argument from. And again, in that really accessible and conversational style. I also watched the live show on replay that Deboki and Nicole had. And I've been thinking a lot about something I know that Deboki and I have talked about because we've had conversations about consumerism. But one of the things that Aja says, like in order to combat some of like consumeristic habits like she has a hobby that she does right and then Devoki was like okay but for all of us who are like chronically online or who have like these hobbies that tie to online things there becomes there comes this other like big consumerism thing that comes with doing your hobbies online or joining communities of hobbies which got me thinking about consumerism in the book community again which is something that we've definitely talked to death but are also at the same time terrible about talking about so i tend to be super minimalistic in general i do get into these moods where i just like buy for endorphins like the whole Christmas thing the whole thing that I went through in my last reading vlog of like buying all this Christmas stuff because I wanted to feel some joy uh that's an example and then obviously like I have a few things like books that I I own a lot of and clothes I own a lot of clothes and so this is me just contending with my own self so I would give this like four out of five stars for writing and then like five out of five stars for like my experience and the way that it made me think so I'll probably land in the middle there when I actually like rate and review it as I mentioned I am still like super behind that is book seven and it is day 13 uh so I've got split tooth I've had it next to me and I've been kind of like reading in little breaks and stuff I would love to finish this tonight I would love to finish this tonight and that would be book eight on day 13 which would be excellent but every time I've said like I would love to finish this tonight in an update I never do uh I've got to finish working and get this payroll thing sorted I think I will be able to finally get it sorted we're almost there and I've got a video that I am done editing I'm just like reviewing I'm halfway through like the review of it and then I will upload it shortly uh, so yeah I also recorded a video this week that is not a blog look at me go <laughs> uh, that's it that's that's all I have <laughs> yesterday was supposed to be the last day of this reading vlog but I've extended it one more day because I didn't really do updates and work busy blah blah <laughs> all the stuff you've heard me talk about already so yeah I decided just to include one more day at the end of this reading vlog and it is well worth it because I've finished three books since I last talked to you one is Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak and I let off with this one because I'm not prepared to review it <laughs> like I don't I don't I don't know how to begin to review this the best way that I can talk about this is to say that if you are a fan of modern poetry I feel like you will enjoy this but if you struggle with modern poetry I don't think that you will get on just with like the format and the writing style it's nothing to say about Tagak and like what she has created but I just feel like modern poetry is such a specific thing that people will either get on with or they don't and that is the closest comparison that I can make to this even though it doesn't 
feel exactly like what Tagak is doing. Another thing about this is because Tagak is telling us about her growing up experience and a lot about the trauma that she suffered during that time, there's almost something childlike in the voice that she uses and you see that again in sort of the shortened sentences and the way that she writes. There were obviously passages that worked better for me than others but in all I'm kind of like I don't <laughs> I don't even know how to rate and review this because it's just kind of like an experience. I also finished two in-depth books which kind of tells you like the headspace I guess I've been in for the last couple of days. So I finished Born in Death and Innocence in Death which are number 23 and 24 in the in death series. So I'm like I think that's like about halfway through the series. <laughs> which I mean the fact that I've made it to book 24 in anything is wild to me considering that like I've been reading Kate Daniels for instance for years and I haven't made it past book six because I'm terrible at series. But this one is just like candy. I just keep popping them and I will say that number 23 Born in Death is probably one of my favorite ones that I've read like in this most recent round because it was very much kind of like a break for from some of the more repetitive things and some of the darker aspects that we are dealing with. It comes with like gigantic content warnings which is really interesting because like so much of the content or the plot is I wouldn't say like fluffy but like I just called it candy which I realize how that sounds but the thing is that like the the beats of it tend to be so repetitive and the plot aspect of it tends to be so procedural that it like really brings you along but the details of it and what like Eve experiences and like the grimness of like the actual murders like all of that is still present so I, I don't mean to discount it I just the the procedural aspect of it really keeps me like pulls me through these very quickly is kind of what I meant. This one we kind of take a break I mean there's still murder <laughs> uh, there's still murder and kidnapping um so that is still present but the B plot is that Eve's best friend is having a baby and babies freak Eve out so a lot of the humor about around like the baby coming and sort of Eve's like fish out of water thing because she grew up in the way that she did she has like no touchstones for some of like pop culture things and like norms in society and even like having friends is very alien to her so she's got this whole fish out of water vibe and that is kind of the highlight in this book so it felt like a little funnier and more jovial than we usually get so I enjoyed that. And then Innocent in Death was interesting because the B plot there is a lot of jealousy like a, an ex of her husband Rourke comes back into town so they have to like navigate the jealousy that she's feeling but it's not necessarily only jealousy but that Rourke kind of has a blind spot here and doesn't see the way that this woman is manipulating him. So I'm not like huge into like jealousy subplots but this one I, I feel like it worked for me just because of the way that again it, it was the focus is like Eve not knowing how to deal with this and being so new to relationships and they've only been married for a couple of years so like this is so foreign to her feeling these things so watching her have to process that and the way that she is getting better about like leaning on her friends and like recognizing her emotions and compartmentalizing when she needs to but going back and revisiting when she has to as well like all of that was great. The mystery itself I you know I understood like 60% of it. At some points there are so many like suspects and connections I was like I what? But I just kept reading anyways so these two were good entries overall into the series. I will probably read more <laughs> this month uh, but I would give these like I would give Born in Death probably like 3.5 out of 5 stars and I would give uh, Innocent in Death 3 out of 5 stars and that is general. I give these all like about in the 3 star range. Um, I don't know that that's entirely fair because I never sit down like this to like think about them very well. I, these are my binge series and I don't want to think about them too deeply and I also know that like each one of them has like a couple things that are, are like not the best but that gets better and better as the series goes on. Like it, it has been a lot of the things that I had issues with in the beginning are calming down. So I'm enjoying these. I'm binging these. Great. What else can I say? The other reason I kind of wanted to extend this one more day is that I I am uh, 81 pages into Once There Were Wolves but it's going by so quickly that I feel like maybe I can finish it tonight. So far I've read 10 books. This would be book 11 and it is 
have no idea what day it is. December 15th. If I can finish this as book 11, I will feel so good about where I am pacing wise. Even if I don't finish this, I feel like I made up a lot of ground with those Eve Dallas books. Um, so yes, I'm feeling, I'm feeling optimistic. Your girl did it. <laughs> <laughs> I finished reading Once There Were Wolves and I have had another really strange reading experience so like doing these off-the-cuff reviews for these books that I've had like strange reading experiences with you know doing my best here but this was really well written and I think that the reason that I'm kind of like I don't know, not put off, but I'm a little unsure is because I enjoyed reading this and I enjoyed the writing and I liked the characters, but I don't feel like I liked anything that happened. <laughs> like I, I am very unsettled by the things that happened in this book, but I think that was purposeful. So I think that the author achieved what she wanted to achieve. I'm just a little bit reeling and I'm not sure that I, I liked the beats that it hit. At all. So this is a book about a scientist who's working to reintroduce wolves in Scotland into the wild and the local community where they are is like pushing back against this because they're worried about their livestock, don't want the wolves there, and there's a lot of like worry and superstition about the wolves be being violent. Um, and as soon as they get there and they reintroduce these wolves into the wild there are some deaths that start happening so everybody immediately blames the wolves but this woman Inti knows that they didn't cause it. So she kind of starts lightly investigating and trying to figure out what is happening and she has a role in what is happening. So like when we figure out what exactly happened and how it impacts the wolves, I didn't like any of that either. And then the ending is like really sour. The other thing I will say is that this is written like a book that has something to say and I spent so much time trying to like read into what exactly it was saying and I'm not sure that I know at the end of this because a lot of like the big thematic stuff about like nature and and the goodness in people and Sid like this has a really strong uh, sister relationship that kind of drives it as well like the way that all of those things end I'm like wh what are what are you what are you trying to say here? And the answer might be nothing because not every book has to say something, but it is written like a book that was trying to say something and I don't know what I was trying to say. Um, but I will say that the like juiciest, most delicious parts of this were the way that the author like describes nature and the way that we can really see Inti as a character, like her love of like the wolves and the outdoors and her complicated relationship with all of that is perfectly reflected in this. There were like descriptions and passages that just uh, I felt like I was in those woods basically so I really enjoyed that part. So I think this is going to be like a four star read and also like I would reread this because I'm curious if like rereading it knowing what was going to happen without that tension would affect or maybe let me appreciate like just the writing aspect of it more. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's the end of this week's reading vlog. It is 11 books I think I said and today is the 16th so not bad at all and I'm really proud because I'm reading like good sized books <laughs> so I haven't dipped into the like uh, graphic novels to finish this off. I think I will be able to finish it all off with novels. Look at me go. If you have read or would like to read any of the books that I've mentioned let's chat down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon.